Welcome on stage, Sebastian and Piotrek. Yeah, here we go. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to be here. And um, so let's talk about NEOS and CK Editor 5 together with Piotrek. So um, I'll first talk about NEOS, obviously, and then Piotrek talks about CK Editor because he knows way better than I do about that. So actually, where do we actually use CK Editor in NEOS? If you take a typical NEOS instance like, like this one, um, um, you have the, 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 the UI, which is a React uh, implementation, and uh, then you have your, the, the part where the website is shown. And actually, we are only talking about this small part, so this part where actually you, um, you edit your content day to day, day in, day out. And of course, in a typical website, this part uh, is actually rather big, and it's a time where lots of editors spend a lot of time in there. So that's why this component is so important for us. So let's quickly recap our editing journey in terms of technical architectures. So when we had the Ember-based user interface, we've used a different editor, a totally different technology stack. And uh, when we switched to CK Editor, um, or when we switched to React, actually, we switched to CK Editor 4. And um, as Robert already mentioned in the keynote, it's actually uh, it, it worked really, really well for the user, but the integration code-wise was a bit hacky because um, CK Editor was not meant to be embedded in the way we do. So uh, it, it packed together the editing abstractions, the APIs, and the user interface into one big bundle. And actually, what we wanted to have is, is like um, is, is uh, pick and match what we actually need. So as Robert already explained, we, for instance, we had to render the CK Editor UI somewhere in a hidden div and uh, uh, just push it out of the display so nobody sees it, because some functions were not accessible there. And we were really happy to, to uh, watch uh, the space, what the guys on, around Piotrek were doing. Uh, by the way, he's the lead developer of CK Editor four, uh, 5, so actually he knows best about this new architecture. And we were following that very, very closely, because what they were doing there is actually um, separating the editing abstractions around all the browser incompatibility stuff, the APIs, and the user interface. So. CK Editor 5 has a really clean API, it has clean integrations and a great extensibility base. And the nice thing is we can actually switch in the user interface. We can use the NEOS user interface instead of the standard one, and that's what we actually want. So how can you actually extend uh, CK Editor? Did anybody try that before? Can I just see some hands? A few people? Okay. Um, thanks. So let's, let's walk you through on a really, really simple example. Let's say... Um, I want to set a highlight class on my selection. So a pretty simple task, basically. I want to select something, I want to click a button, and I want to span class something to, to be seen. So in, 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 in UI, you want to be able to select code. You want to click this button. Um, it should still be selected. You can want to unhide it again. And actually, this simple functionality um, is more complex than you think, because uh, the button active state depends on the selection, for instance. You want to be able to deselect text again. You want to be able to select multiple paragraphs, and the system must do the right thing automatically. So it's way more difficult than you actually think. And um, to actually implement that, um, we need two parts. First, we need the CK Editor integration, which is the main editing part. And there we need to do some st stuff. And second, we need to. Uh, change and alter the NEOS behavior, because uh, as you see, there's this plus button next to the bold and italic um, up in the sidebar, and this button is part of the NEOS user interface, so we actually need to add something there as well. So, Piotrek uh, will show a bit about the CK Editor 5. Okay, uh, hello everyone. So, uh, to be able to write uh, plugins for CK Editor 5, first of all, you need to know a bit about CK Editor 5 itself. Uh, so uh, the first thing that you need to know is that in CK Editor 5, everything is a plugin. So even features such as typing or paragraphs are implemented as plugins. Additionally, um, plugins, the official plugins are implemented in a quite granular way. So for instance, the image feature is built out of image base, image caption, image styles, image upload, and so on. Uh, thanks to that, uh, you are able to just pick those plugins that you need or want and you know, drop the other ones or implement the other ones. So it's a great flexibility here. 
Um, then, uh, what is a plugin in CK5? Uh, it's uh, either a simple class that extends the base plugin class, or even a simpler constructor function which uh, gets the editor as, a, as its parameter. And uh, in addition to, uh, to plugins being implemented in a really gra granular way, um, they are also split into parts. So there's the UI part and the editing part. Uh, the UI part implements things like buttons, dropdowns, balloons, and so on. And the editing part implements everything else. Um, and thanks to that, you can you know, drop the UI part and implement your own UI for CK5. And that's actually what Neos uh, did, uh, because it ships with its own React-based UI. Uh, so in this presentation, we'll focus only on the editing part because that's that's what you need. Um, so yeah, but before we'll be able to talk about implementing uh, a plugin, let's talk about uh, CK25 architecture. So the first thing is that CK25 implements an MV whatever uh, design pattern. Uh, so it has this uh, abstract data model. Uh, it's a tree structure, tr structure just like uh, the DOM, but it's uh, quite different from the DOM. So for instance, inline styles such as strong, uh, italic, or links are not represented as separate elements here, uh, but rather by uh, attributes of text nodes. So in other words, in CK5, text nodes can have attributes just like elements. And uh, then we have the view, and it's another abstract structure, so it's still not the DOM, um, but the view is much more close to the DOM uh, than the model. So here you can see that there is a strong element representing the, uh, the bold and a much like common uh, naming for the elements. Um, and finally, there is the DOM. And the DOM is generated automatically by CK5, so you don't have to worry about that. And at this stage, CK5 adds uh, things like uh, uh, BRs in empty paragraphs, so they have non-zero height because they would have a zero height otherwise, and rendering subsequent spaces as a combination of uh, non-breaking spaces and normal spaces. And as a plugin author, you only live between the model and the view, so you really don't have to care about the DOM and its quirks, and it makes implementing features much easier. And then, how does the data flow look? So, uh, the user interacts with the DOM, for instance, clicks a button, uh, you listen to this event, you change the model, uh, the model is converted to the view, and then the view is automatically rendered uh, to the DOM. And that's it. Uh, so, once we know that, uh, how can we implement our first feature? Uh, so, there are three parts that you need to implement, the schema definition, converters, and commands. Uh, so, by using the schema, you define uh, what kind of elements and attributes are allowed in CK5's uh, model. So here we see a myBlock element, uh, which is allowed in a root element and in the section element, uh, and, in, and it also allows a text alignment attribute on, itself, on itself. And in the other example, uh, we are extending a text node, so we are saying that a text node can have attribute my highlight. Um, so once uh, the schema is uh, defined, we can now uh, tell the editor how the model structure should be converted to the view and view back to the model. Uh, so the model is converted to two separate views. One is for the editing, so this is the view that the user sees and the user edits, and the other view is used for generating data, so that's the HTML, for instance, that you save into your database. And uh, the view has to be uh, converted to the model uh, when you load data to the editor, if you load HTML, and when you're pasting, because then you're pasting HTML. Um, so finally, if the user is meant to interact with your feature, then usually you have to implement a comment as well. Uh, so a comment is a combination of an action and a state. Uh, so for instance, the bold command's action is to either apply or remove the bold uh, attribute from the currently selected text, and it's based on the state of the command, which is that either the command is on when the uh, bolt is already applied here or not. Um, yep. Um, so once we know all those things, let's look at this uh, that at the implementation of the feature that Sebastian showed you. Uh, so the important lines are between. Uh, line number 6 and 24. So in line number 6, we tell that uh, the uh, text nodes in the editor can have attributes highlight. And then we con uh, configure the conversion from the model attribute called uh, highlight to an element in the view called sp uh, span with some classes and inline styles. And finally, we uh, create a command called highlight, which applies and removes uh, all those 
uh, attributes. And that's it that you need to know about CK25 here. So what we got by now is a neatly bundled package called a CK Editor 5 plugin, which is the single class you've just seen. And it, now we need to talk about how can we enable that one, how to, can we configure that one, um, and connect it with a button. And that's the next step we need to take. So let's look at what we actually need to, to integrate engineers. And as it's JavaScript code, we need some package JSON file. And um, that's basically just here for completeness. Um, you depend on the Neos UI extensibility package. Um, there are some build scripts which these are which these are providing, and we need to depend on some CK Editor 5 dependencies. And that's basically it. Then you need an index.js file. And this index.js file really only consists of this single line saying require a manifest. So what actually is that manifest? Um, to understand that, we have to take a little detour, basically, So um, to understand what a manifest is. So we have to talk about the user interface bootstrap sequence, so meaning what actually happens when you open the UI in your browser, then a lot of things happen in the background until you actually see something on the screen. And that's what I'm going to talk about from left to right. So first, uh, we have a central component in, in, C in NEOS, which is called the registry. Um, it has nothing to do with the Windows registry, so don't worry. Um, but basically, it, store, it stores configuration um, of the Neos user interface at a central place. So it's a big, big nested JSON structure. That's basically how you can imagine it. And the way we work with it is that um, when Neos is started, the first thing which happens is the core manifest is loaded. So meaning the manifest is actually the file where this registry can be changed, can be mutated, can be updated. Um, so the core manifest sets up the basic parts of the user interface, sets up the basic buttons like bold and italic and so on. And then you can, uh, with the plugin we've just created by, by the two files before, uh, which we've just seen, or the, the plugin we are about to create actually, this will be loaded after the core manifest. So um, actually the, the um, plugins can adjust the registry in any way they like. So they can remove things, they can add things, like in our case, we can add a button, we can add the CK Editor 5 plugin. And then something really important happens because this registry is frozen, meaning at this point in time, it will become immutable. And then actually the user interface will start up and start reading from the registry. So um, this looks like a really long process, but actually this, what you see here, this happens just in a matter of a few milliseconds directly in your browser every time you just open the UI. So to recap, the manifest fills the registry at the user interface startup. And um, what do we actually need to do with it? So we, in the manifest file, uh, we, we import this manifest function. And uh, there, we have to do two things. Um, we first have to register our CK editor plugin. And second, we need to add a button to the toolbar. And um, don't worry that these lines are kind of long now, because we use very long namespace names here, so that's mostly why the names are so long. So first part, we need to register the CK Editor but, uh, uh, plugin, but not in all cases, but only if this node type has the formatting option enabled. You know, we don't want to enable it for all node types, but you, you want to be able as an integrator to choose where you do you want to apply the highlighting in the node types uh, YAML file. So um, this is what we do in line two, we check if the formatting Neos Neos UI extensibility examples my custom span is actually enabled. And if that is the case, we just add our plugin, the example plugin in line four to the plugins list and return that. Um, so that means this, um, this configuration function just mutates, changes the CK editor configuration the way we need it. And this way, the plugin Piotr just shows, uh, showed uh, will, will uh, get into place. Second, we need to add a button to the toolbar. So we take another registry for that. Now we take the CK Editor 5 rich text toolbar registry, and there we have to, in line 8, we add the, the React component to it, and then we can set some properties, like uh, the active state depends on the output format of the highlight command. It's only visible if this formatting option in the, in the settings is set. Um, we need to define an icon and a tooltip. And the button itself is rather simple. It's a really small React component um, where we, where we um, render an icon button from Neos. And as soon as you click it, we execute this handle click function uh, where we dispatch this highlight command to CK Editor, which in turn will do all the hard work. So 
we need this and together the example plugin which uh, Piotr just demonstrated. And this is actually the general pattern to implement things. You always need a package, package JSON and a manifest. And then you always have these two parts. You have the uh, React part for the Neos user interface. And then you have the CK Editor API part um, for um, the CK uh, Editor integration. And currently, the API is still rather low level. And we will add to build more abstract more abstractions on top of it for common cases. But currently, the API is focused on making everything possible, which, which is doable. So that's basically how we implemented this, um, this kind of feature. Um, and remember, again, this does quite a lot of functionality. So actually, it's, uh, it's quite some, some involved thing um, that we can do that with these few lines of code. So um, what we've now actually seen is uh, basic uh, CK editor extensibility. And you can extend this example to all kinds of different CSS classes, uh, paragraph styles, and so on and so on. Um, to get you started, this is all part of a Git repository on uh, Neos UI extensibility examples, and it's called Custom Styling for Editor. If you check out the repository, you'll find this part there. And um, actually, um, if you have any questions, um, let's just uh, hit us on Slack, on Neos UI channel, or on Discuss, and we are really, really happy to help there um, to get you started with that. Okay. Um, so we've showed you how you can extend the existing CK Editor 5 integration in Neos. And of course, we covered only the real basics. So if you need to build something more complex, you'll have to refer to either CK Editor 5 documentation or Neos documentation. Now, there's one more thing that we would like to show you. So the idea for this talk wasn't actually mine or, or, or uh, Sebastian's. It came from Dmitry Pisarev, who's the uh, core team member of Neos, and he uh, integrated uh, CK Editor 5 into Neos. And he came to me and said that it would be really cool if you could show something spectacular during this talk. Uh, so we started thinking how we could use this uh, situation uh, that a core uh, developer of Neos is working together with a core developer of CK Editor. Uh, so the first thing that we thought about is real-time collaborative editing. And uh, while cool, uh, it would be too easy because CK Editor 5 uh, implements it already, so we would just reuse the existing components. So instead, we started thinking how we could use, uh, how we could uh, improve the editing user experience. So uh, as an outsider here, I, I really have to say that I like what Neos does with a structured content, and I think there's a great fit between Neos and CK Editor 5 here. Um, but if you uh, talk with people who actually use Neos or just play with it a bit longer, then you learn that there are some user experience issues. So first of all, there is no shared undo stack. So if you change something in the headline and then in the text node, then you cannot undo those things one by one. Um, there is no big selection, so you cannot select two nodes and cut them and paste somewhere else. Uh, you cannot navigate easily with caret by using the keyboard between nodes as well. And finally, there are cases like I want to insert an image in the middle of a text node, and they are just too complicated. So uh, to understand why those problems exist, we have to understand how the editing is implemented right now. Uh, so this is a content collection which contains headline text and an image with a caption. And uh, each of those nodes currently have one editor. So there's an editor for the headline, editor for the text, and an editor for, uh, for the image. Um, that doesn't sound good, right? So what if we could show all those nodes in one editor instance, just like that? And this new approach automatically solves all the mentioned issues. So there's one undo stack, because everything happens in one editor instance. There's big selection, because again, it all happens in one editor instance. You can navigate with your caret, and you can insert and paste stuff wherever you want. Um, however, this new approach would come with uh, its own challenges. And first of all, it, required, uh, it would require a much closer integration between CK5 and Neos. Then, normally, it's Cicator who uh, is uh, responsible for rendering its nodes. And here, we would have to use Fusion backend for that. So in, terms, in turn, it means that uh, we would have to do run trips to the server for the content. So it means asynchronous conversion. So the things get crazy a bit. And finally, since Cicator would lose a bit of its control over the rendering, it's, it comes with its own challenges. So if it's all complicated like that, then how it's even possible? 
so here we have the content collection that I showed you before, and we can map it to a, a editor model structure. So as you can see here, we have Neo's headline element in the model, which represents the headline node in the collection. Uh, we have uh, Neo's text for the text node in the collection, and so on. Additionally, the contents of these uh, nodes in the content collection is directly nested in Secretor 5 elements as well. And thanks to that inlining, we'll be able to easily you know, select things and navigate through that. And finally, once we have this uh, editor model which represents this collection, we can ask Fusion backend how we should render those nodes, so the model, how the model should be converted to the view based on the Fusion backend. Um, so yeah, it's a demo time, and uh, before I will show it to you, please bear in mind that this is just a proof of concept. Uh, it was built outside of NEOS for, for the time constraints. Uh, it's not meant to showcase the UI, so it's pretty ugly. And uh, yeah, its main focus is on how a structured content could be edited in Cicator 5. Structured content just like NEOS is structured content. So uh, some code first. He, for the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to tell the editor uh, how a certain node has to be rendered to the view. So here we have this text node definition, which has this render function. And uh, the render function returns a section element with a diff inside, and this diff is the editable part of this, of this node. Uh, you can imagine here this is, a, this is completely synchronous code, but we could you know, make a round trip to, uh, to Fusion uh, here. Mm, then we have a bit more complicated implementation. The, the major difference here is uh, that the render function uh, accepts properties, and you can use those properties, so properties of an existing node, to render this template. Um, so once we have those definitions, we can actually load data to the editor, and this time it's not like a blob HTML. Uh, it, is, uh, it consists of an array of, for instance, here two, uh, two nodes. So there is a text node with some UID and the contents of its editable part, which is a HTML blob here. And then there is uh, the image node with UID, its editable part, so the caption and its properties. So yeah, how it, uh, how it looks. So this is the actual demo that I implemented. It was meant to look a bit like news, but of course it doesn't. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see the content structure, so a list of nodes uh, that are represented by the editor. And of course, in the center, there is this editor instance. And uh, so yeah, if you move your carrot through the editor, you can see that the uh, nodes are being highlighted Oh, it doesn't play here, uh, are hi highlighted on the left, so we can see how the mapping goes. So there is video selected now. Um, yeah, if I edit some node, then it will blink in the content structure because the editor notifies the content structure that the node has changed, so it has the new editable uh, content. And yeah, uh, the important thing here is that the content structure is not built by the editor. Uh, instead, it listens to events fired by the editor and updates its own state accordingly. So you can imagine synchronizing the editor data with the backend data here based on those events. And what events uh, do we actually uh, talk about? So there is select, update, insert, and remove. Those events are fired by the editor. So they will appear in the console here. I hope you'll be able to, to see them. Um, so the first thing that I do, I move the carrot between those nodes in the editor so that were select event uh, locked. Then I edit the content of uh, the headline. So there is an update event locked with the contents of the new edited headline uh, node. Then I type some things. So there are, there's a couple of update events. I can select an entire node press backspace, and it gets removed, so a remove event is being fired, and the content structure is updated accordingly as well. And finally, when I, when I undo, the node appears back, so there's insert event because we created this node. Um, yep, and you can imagine here that you know, the backend would also listen to those events and, and save it to the database. Uh, so another one, current navigation. So we can use your keyboard to move down. You can select an image as well. You can move back. You can use your mouse as well. Select through node, node boundaries. You can select two nodes as well, cut them, and paste them somewhere else. 
just like it. So we are inserting one more node here, also quite easy. And now I can undo all those, cha all those changes one by one. And it all happens inside the editor. And we have the initial content. Uh, so yeah, uh, another one, changing properties of uh, a single node. So I select an image, and I change its URL. Then I change its uh, alignment. And it's not like CKator that defines how it should be rendered now. It's the Fusion, let's say, backend asked how this node should be now rendered. So I edited this node. And then I can undo all of that as well. And the last one, uh, finally, as promised, inserting stuff in the middle of a content. So uh, to insert an image at this position, you just put the caret there, press the image button, sets the image URL, and the image is there. Uh, the, Im the text node was split, so a new text node was created below, and the, those two text nodes were, up were updated. I can also uh, delete some uh, or cut some uh, video and paste it in this text as well. You can also see that the content structure got updated to reflect that. So yeah, those were all the demos. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, so those were all the demos. If you like this concept, uh, then first of all, we need your feedback. And most importantly, I think we need working integrations with uh, CMSs. Dmitry saw this demo before this presentation, presentation actually, and he already started working on an integration with, uh, with Neos. So there, it may be ready already. Um, yeah, the code is here. Uh, you can play with it. There's instruction how to run it. It's quite ugly. It really. You know, we didn't have that much time, uh, but it works. Um, so yeah, for me, uh, it was real fun to work with that. It was super cool to work on something existing and really like how Neos works here. Uh, it was also a great uh, test for me, like for the flexibility of Secator 5 and its extensibility. And I was even a bit surprised because I didn't have to hack through Secator 5 uh, code to make it work. I just wrote a plugin uh, for that. And uh, most importantly, I think it, it works. It works, and I managed to keep it quite generic. So uh, it can actually be, I think, implemented in other CMSs as well, which actually makes the likelihood of this ever becoming a production ready uh, much higher. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think uh, that's I, when I saw that, I think Tuesday last week, I was really stunned by that and was like, whoa, that's really crazy and really nice. And um, I had immediately some ideas what I want to build with that. Um, I think if we, would, if we were able to integrate that, we, it would allow us to create new content without any background round, round trip even. So stuff like more going more into the direction of offline editing actually is would be a possibility with that change. So... Um, and, and if we do that, we could reduce, we could tr dramatically reduce the wait times where the user waits on its interactions, right? The user currently clicks add, um, he chooses something, the page reloads or a part of the page reloads. We need a background round trip for these parts. And actually, we could get rid of that for many parts. And obviously, actually, it's not, it's not easy to do that. Um, so as you all know, uh, we use Fusion in the backend for rendering things. And... Um, I think my personal idea, if, if we would go that direction, actually what we would need is we would need to um, um, pre-render fusion elements basically with placeholders so that we can send that to, to, to CK Editor. That would be one option, for instance, so that we can configure CK Editor correctly. But also, if you, if you have different ideas of how to approach that, of course, that would be really, really valuable. So it's... It would be quite a challenge, but um, I'm, I would be really glad if we would make it to, to some part. Um, sadly, I personally won't be able to pursue that further right now because uh, I have another talk tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> this talk is finished, but I have to work on the topic after the talk as well. Me, so. me too. <laughs> <laughs> There's some work to be left. And um, what, what, what I liked so much, it, 
it's I think extremely impressive what uh, what and what you can build up when you join forces with different open source projects. So working actually we didn't meet before uh, tomorrow uh, this morning actually. So we just had some hangouts and so on, and it was just really really frictionless. It was I learned a lot about CK editor and I think you also learned yeah, a tremendous true, true. lot about Neos, and uh, it was a really great time. It was a lot of fun. So thanks, and I, I want to take that chance also to say thank you to Piotrek and the whole CK editor team because they have been supporting us for the last few years very very well where we integrated the different versions in the editor and all the times where we've seen some strange bugs they were responsive in like half an hour so thank you for that um thank you <laughs> Right, and if you have questions left, then we can meet at the speaker lounge uh, in a second. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.